everybody, welcome to another episode of Nothing. Whoops, didn't mean to shoot. <laughs> this is another Let's Play episode, but this time it is in a game called Terra. T-E-R-A, which is an acronym for the Exiled Realm of Arborea. Terra is now a completely free-to-play game. Um, although initially when you had to purchase it, you did have to pay for the game and pay a monthly subscription, but that has since changed quite a long time ago. As you can see, this game is quite different from WoW. Um, it is a very anime-esque sort of aesthetic. It is a Korean MMORPG. And I am just going to show you not how to play per se, but just a few interesting basics and differences that this game has um, in comparison to WoW. Like, for example, <clears throat> you can see on the bottom right there, is it's a special little tooltip thing that you have only if you have the monthly subscription. I had a voucher for one day as an elite, and I enabled it just so that I can show you guys the difference. By the way, this mount was only given to you if you were a founder of the game. I have been playing this game since the alpha stage, which is why I have this mount. You are only have it if you were a founder, if you were playing. You could actually get a title as well. I just enabled it to show you guys. You get the founder title. It is yellow or gold, which is not something that anybody has gotten unless they have been playing this game since the alpha stage. I was invited to the alpha and as such I'm a founder so I get the title and this unique mount but they do have other variations of that mount now as well <clears throat> um, I will be showing you guys um, something that this game has that WoW does not have which is the ability to sort of put together fashionable outfits WoW sort of does that too, um, it, with transmogrification, but it is a little bit different in Terra. And in Terra, you use this thing called fashion coupons, and with it, you are able to open an extra window out of which you will then get the different costumes that you can select. <clears throat> now, fashion coupons usually drop from BAMs which is literally an acronym for big ass monster they're extremely large elites that are found in the world um they're not always part of a quest and they're definitely not only in dungeons um they're all over the universe in this particular game and when you kill them you do get stuff like that when you're an elite you get an additional mount you get a hundred percent uh gold boost as well um <clears throat> I just wanted to show you guys the elite status perks, which is you're only going to get these if you are an elite, so you have the monthly subscription. So that enables your gold reward by 100% um, for an hour, and you can keep enabling it over and over and over again because the cooldown is only 10 minutes. Um, I showed you the map already as well. You get a village atlas, which allows you to teleport to any city, town, or village. The game has atlases that you can use if you don't have Elite, but that you can only use them one time and you have to purchase them separately. This you can use as many times as you want and it's just there. You get a travel journal, which I will be honest with you, I'm not 100% how to use. It's supposed to teleport you just to any location that you want that it, you saved on it, but I wasn't able to get it to work, so I don't want to tell you like, oh, you can use this, because I don't know if you can. Um, you get a gift box. <clears throat> um, I should not have used them up, actually, but you get a gift cup and a consumable box. The gift box will just have any sort of random item that you can get in the game, period. It could be an accessory, it could be a consumable, it could be a piece of gear, it could be absolutely anything. It is a total surprise, and you can sometimes even get mounts and pets, which, of course, this game also has, and which can be extremely expensive. You won't know what you're going to get until you open it up, and you can open it once every day. The reset at 8 p.m. EST. And the consumable box just gives you a stack of different useful consumables every single day, like potions, um, reset scrolls for instances. For example, this potion, these three guys that I just hovered over, you get them out of that box. The crafter's cure is really useful. Um, well, they're all pretty useful, but, you know, um, <clears throat> they up your damage, your defense, your attack speed, things like that. 
they gave you variations of that. Um, they don't stack, so that's kind of unfortunate, but that's okay. So you get a, one of each of those every single day if you have Elite and you open the box. You have these, the Nostrum, which is basically like a permanent buff that increases your power, endurance, your MP5, your crit power, attack speed. Um, and again, this is something that is available in the game for purchase, but you have a permanent, more powerful version of this that you can use over and over and over. It lasts for 30 minutes, but the cooldown is only 5 seconds, so you can keep it up indefinitely. You also get this. Uh, it is a teleport to a zone that you can only interact with if you're level 65 or higher. 65 is the maximum level in this game. So um, it's sort of like a little mini dungeon that you can solo for each individual player just to get a couple of extra materials or rewards or things like that once you reach level 65. You can still reach that again if you are not an elite member. But instead of purchasing it, you can just have it right there all the time. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I have this little gunner here. Uh, she's an Ellen. And uh, the Ellen race are even, they're meant to be thousands of years old, but as you can see, they look very young. They look like children. And I do enjoy playing them because I like the cuteness factor, but I don't like the sexualized factor um, that they do. So I do alter my Ellen characters, and I will be showing you how you can alter them. There are things in this game that, wow, definitely does not have that allow you to permanently alter the physical aspects of your character, such as in this case that I will show you the thighs and the height. I know those are very specific things for you to change, but I think they were kind of both created with Ellen in mind for those who want to play Ellen but don't want to look like a sexy child. So I'm going to show you guys how you can obtain those changers and um, how they work and how they affect your character. <clears throat> you can see that, you know, I mean, you can see on the screen for yourself that she basically looks like an eight-year-old that's wearing, like, a really, a bra, essentially. And, um, well, I do love the race, especially now that they're able to be gunners, which is one of my favorite classes in the game. That's a gun on her back, by the way. A massive, massive gun. Um, I am just going to change her up a little bit. So you can go to this guy and purchase fashion coupons. I know I mentioned that they drop from BAMs, and it used to be a lot harder to get them before, but if you have the gold, you can quite literally just buy them now. I do have some in my bank, but I just wanted to show you guys where you could obtain them. So when you right click the fashion coupon, you are able to see all the different things that you can buy. You can get the gear costumes for the type of class you have, and you could also get some additional little like hats or dyes or boosts or things like that that will work on any character. I'm just showing you guys all the different options that you have that are all purchasable for that. Now, let's see, we have the Shape Changer thighs, so I'm going to get one of those. And Shape Changer height, I'm going to get one of those. There's a chest one as well for the boobs, but one, that defeats the purpose that I'm trying to do here. Two, it only works when the character wears a bikini, so there's no real point. So once you purchase those guys, you right click them, <clears throat> and you choose the size that you want. Now, uh, she is zero, which is her normal right now. You can actually go ahead and make them even bigger. Or you can make them smaller. I usually go for two because it's the most realistic version, I think. Um, I think if I go for three, she ends up being a little bit too thin. So I just go for two, and two makes her just look proportionate to me. She looks normal. So I'm going to go ahead and go with two. And there you go, you can see for yourself that her thighs now look different. They're no longer all chubby and fat and, you know, chibi looking. She has completely normal thighs that are perfectly proportioned to the rest of her. And now I'm going to go ahead and fix her height. Again, this is her standard height at zero, but I'm going to max her, I'm going to make her as tall as possible, max her all the way up to plus three. And you can make her shorter as well, but that's not not what I'm doing here. I'm not trying to make her teeny and adorable. I'm trying to make her look like closer to at least teenage age. So that if she's going to be sexualized by her outfit, at least she will look. So here is a regular Ellen for comparison. I'm going to stand next to her. <clears throat> that is a default Ellen on the left in me, the modified normal thighs, taller Ellen on the right. 
There's quite a bit of a difference there. I feel like she even looks a little bit more elegant. Uh, her stance, not so much, but um, her default stance can't be as the one on the left because the one on the left is a ninja, which is one of the newer classes, and they got a completely separate stance, which I much prefer to the regular Ellen stance, but that's not something I can change without in-game modifications, and I don't have any on this game, unlike WoW, where I have a ton. So, um, I'm going to go to the bank here. By the way, the way you interact um, in this game is a little bit different. You don't you use WASD for movement, but you use your mouse for the camera. Oh, look at this Ellen standing up here. Isn't she adorable? That outfit is so cute. But anyway, um, you use the mouse for the camera to move it around simultaneously while using WASD for movement, um, which was a little bit different than in WoW. And um, the way you also attack is different. Uh, you will use your 1, 2, 3 keys and all that as well for attacking. But you're also going to use the left and right mouse button for your basics attack. So, and I'm sorry, to aim as well. So you're going to aim with your mouse. You're going to left click to do some damage. You're going to right click to use a different ability. In the case of this one, uh, for gunners, it's to kind of roll away. <clears throat> and uh, if you ever do try this game, you're going to see for yourself that it's quite a different way of playing. But in my opinion, it is also better. So I'm taking out some more fashion coupons here and some gold to buy some additional ones because I am going to be changing her outfit. So I want to show you guys how you can do that. And I'm going to actually physically do that. Now, Gunners are... This is what she's wearing now. She has the default equipped items that she got from requesting or whatnot. I do believe Gunners wear leather. I'm pretty sure they're leather wears. Mm. We're gonna find out. Um, you can use the controls on the left and the right here. You can click in order to move the character around so you can see all around what she looks like and you know, <clears throat> have a better visualization of what you're changing or not changing if you just wanted to get a close up of what your character looks like. You have these controls here. So, um, let's see, she's not a leather wearer, I apologize. Uh, metal. Gunners were metal, so. Oh, there's quite a bit of new outfits. You're going to right click to try it on, and you're going to see here, um, Gunners initially started out with not so many options, and they have released more options now. You can get a skin for her full outfit, and you can get a skin for the gun as well separately, so we're going to just try these on. I haven't seen these before. I haven't played Terra in a while, so this is my first time seeing these guys for a while. And they look pretty darn good. This is the outfit that they came out with initially, but now they have a bunch of recolors of it. This was the default one, the Black Will suit. This is what um, they released in the very beginning. <clears throat> and um, I've used it for a long time on my other gunners, but now they have recolors of it, which is nice. Options are always good. Oh, that's pretty. I like the blue. I don't know. I kind of like them all. They look fantastic. Mm, that's really nice. The green is nice. I really like the green. And then we have some non-recolors, but some additional separate outfits. I've always liked this outfit because the bulls on the shoulders are really great but I don't like the very short skirt. <clears throat> and these guys, even though they have very different names and thumbnails, they're actually basically the exact same thing. They're just recolored versions. One has a purple little apron in the front and the other one has a white one, and that's about it. They're so expensive too. I mean, for just that, that's all you get. Hmm. Well, um... I'm trying to see if there's anything like, again, like I'm seeing a different name in the tooltip, but okay, finally, something different. I like this one, I always have, but I don't like the color of it. And the problem with the, a lot of these costumes, some of them, um, 
Well, you know, for the most part, the costumes, you cannot change the color of them. Um, there's a thing called in the game called Apothecary Dye, which you can use to dye your costume, but you can usually only do that with gear that drops. You usually can't do it with the costumes that go over your gear. And as lovely as that shade of blue is, it won't go with anything. So, see, I don't even know why they offer you this costume. This is the basic starter outfit that everybody gets. Like, who wants to look like that forever? This one's okay, I guess. I don't know. It's not great. It's better than the blue, though. Mm. I like the way it completely covers her body. That's kind of what I'm going for here. I want to get her a costume that covers her up. And this matches the wings that I have for her really, really well. Um, Tara had a fifth year anniversary. It's been around for a while. And a you know, you can log on a bunch of characters and get this set of wings, a back piece, costume piece, just for free, and that matches really well. I haven't used the wings yet. I only got them on two characters. I didn't log in, bother logging in everybody to get a set. I regret that now, but it's fine. So, and I would like to use the wings on her, but, you know, I gotta figure out something that matches the wings. Because it's going to have to match the wings and whatever skin I get for the gun is going to have to match the wings. Because you won't see the gun while the wings are on, but you'll still see it when she shoots. <laughs> now see, okay, this one's pretty cute. This is pretty adorable in a ridiculous sort of way. <laughs> I like the pink. And I like the sort of uh, skirt-like detail. But I just don't know if there would be a gun that would match. Or a gun skin, rather. Hmm. Plus, that one's really expensive. I mean, it's like 600 fashion coupons. I'm sorry, 500. But that's still a ton, especially... Okay, now there is one plus. It's a fashion to die for. Which makes me think that it is dyeable. But I don't want to take the risk of spending 500 fashion coupons and then finding out I can't dye it and then I can't get my coupons back and I'm stuck with it. So, let's see if there's any guns that match. Hmm. Maybe that one. I just don't know. I can't really decide. I'm sorry, I hope you guys don't mind. Um, um, just trying to pick out this outfit here. I wish this was live so you guys could just be like, pick this one, no, pick this one, and maybe help me pick something out. <laughs> Instead, you just hear and see me muttering over my indecisions. Ooh, now the back of this one is really nice. I'm loving those coattails. Actually, it's pretty nice on this one too. I really like this one. I love the purple. Purple is my favorite color. I mentioned this before, next to rainbow. But I'm really trying to match the wings here. I don't know. I'm trying to match everything. Because you also got it. I want to match the wings, the mount, the gun skin. There's so many things. And it's not like I have to match any of them, but it's it bothers me if I don't. I really like the white, but it is a bit, air, a bit washing out, maybe? Hmm. It does go with the wings quite well and her coloring. But is it too white? But the other thing is that it's, this is a very reflective outfit, so it's not going to stay white. It's going to look like whatever color it's next to. So I'm probably not going to get that for that reason alone. Oh, <sighs> goodness. If only I could recolor this one. It would be quite nice. Oh, that just looks like the outfit she has on now. Alright, um... That's nice, but again, it's, it's a little too sexy. I don't like the, the stockings. The fishnet in this. And this one, you know, it matches the wings really well. But I don't know if it's going to match the gun or the mount. And uh, it's a little simple. It covers her up for the most part, but it's, I don't know, it doesn't speak to me. And I need it to speak to me. Because if my character doesn't look the way I really need her to look, I'm just not going to play her as much. I know it's a stupid thing, 
but I can't help it. <laughs> oh goodness, it's stuck on her. Come on, revert back to how you were. Fix it. There we go. All right. Oh my goodness. Decisions, decisions. Well, all right. I'm going to get some more fashion coupons. Um, I'm going to get some more gold so that I can get some more fashion coupons. Because I'm certainly not going to go ahead and grind some. She's not high enough level to kill the amount of bang bams it would take. She, I have a bit of gold in the bank. I know it, was 50, it says 50,000 there. But, uh, huh, I just got all the achievements. It's really not a lot of money for this game because Asian MMOs are very inflated with the money. Like 50,000 gold is absolutely, it's nothing. It's basically nothing. So, alright, um, let's, let's do some math. How many do I have and how many do I need? I need 500 and I have 225, so then I need like 275 more. Okay. And 500 is going to be enough for one costume and one gun skin. All the gun skins are 250. And the cheaper costumes are 250. So it should be just enough. Hmm. I'm just gonna put the money I didn't use back in there. Because the bank is shared, by the way. Your characters all share the same bank. So if I were to log on a different character on the server, I will access the exact same bank and see all the same things. So I put the money back so somebody else who needs it can use it. But all right. So, gun skins. Let's check them out. I've always liked this one a lot. But again, it doesn't match a lot. Them's the problem. This one's amazing because it looks like a wolf. This one's just pretty. That's just like the basic one you get. Um, this looks like a black wolf. I know they call it the dragon, but that doesn't look like a dragon mouth to me. That looks like a wolf. There's this futuristic looking one. There's this badass looking one. A version of the white. Then there's this one, as and the purple version of it, which I love just because purple. This one is just really pretty. But again, it's not only. Really, what does it match? How are you gonna match that? It's gorgeous. But what is it gonna match? Them's the problem. Well, let's see if we can match it with anything. I highly doubt it. I can get it to match, and I mean really match. See, it doesn't really go with the white, not really. Not quite. Mm -mm -mm. How about this one? Ooh, now that kind of almost matches. It matches one little part of the handle, but not so much the rest of it. But it does look nice. They look pretty nice together, I don't know, let's see. Mm, but I don't know if that would match the wings though, that's right, I was going to have the wings on. And it's not really going to match the wings. Mm. Okay, maybe I'm not going to match that one. Oh my goodness. What has it been, like 20 minutes of me just trying to match a freaking outfit? I'm sorry you guys, I really am. But like, if I can't get this right, I cannot play her. That is just how I am. And, you know, I'm go I keep going back to, like, the, the two purples. Like, this wine color and then, like, the shimmery purple one. And they just, they speak to me. So, it's going to be down to one of them. So, I'm just going to have to find another gun that will match them. Well, one of them. This one is just beautiful. But I don't think I'll have anything that would match it. That's the hard part. Not a gun, I mean. Gun skin that would match it. Mmm. Goodness gracious. I don't know what to do. Again, I'm like, I wish this was live so people could just, like, help me decide and be like, just do this one. And I'll be like, okay. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I probably wouldn't be like, okay. I'd probably be like, no, it doesn't match well enough or something stupid. Oh, this is going to be the most boring video ever. Come on, woman. Make a decision. Oh. All right, so 
as you can see, I made a decision. I had to cut for a minute, and I was like, you know what? It's going to take forever before I, I'm just going to be deciding for another 20 minutes. So I decided to decide and then come back with my decision. So here it is. I picked not the wine, but the purple one. And it matches the wings, and it matches the gun skin that I got her. So I'm going to show you guys the basics of questing. So you come up to this dude, you hit F to interact with the NPC, and you just keep hitting F in order to get to the next part, like, and F to accept the quest, and F to hand in the quest, just F for any sort of interaction. So you can see the quest on the right hand uh, side there, it says isolated town. You can see the little map on the left there, so you can see where you're going. That's not always up, you can choose to have it up, and I choose to always have it up because it doesn't get in the way and it helps me see where I'm going. And I'm going to show you guys, you're going to use your mouse to aim, and you're going to left click to fire or attack or whatever it is that you use. Um, but then you have stronger abilities in your 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. keys that you're going to use as well. So I just used left click, and right now my left click is shooting. Remember, in this game you actually have to aim. You can't just like click on a character or a mob rather and it'll automatically lock onto them you don't do that you have to aim if you will not aim you will miss like in the real world ish this is definitely not the real world so there we go um so they're gonna drop loot on the ground and you hit f once again to pick that loot up Ta-da! You also use F to gather. Like I'm going to show you guys, I hit F just there, and um, there's gathering and cr there's crafting in this game period, and you can gather plants and you can gather ore. And unlike other games, you don't need to pick up secondary uh, professions to do that. Everybody is just able to do that. But there is a point system. So, for example, I just hit F, and if I succeeded, you can fail. I have succeeded, and I have gathered that plant. Now there is a limit to how much you can gather over the course of one day which is where the earlier shown crafter cure comes into play I'm going to see if I can find another one so I can show you guys what I'm talking about on the mini map there you can see what I'm talking about you see this crafter's cure it restores a thousand production points and you initially start with four thousand production points and they get spent every time you gather something so if you are out and you want to keep going, you can use that crafter skewer to replenish your production points if you don't want to wait until the very next day to continue gathering. You can see on the bottom there, point cost 25 and the amount of points I have left, 39.75 after the first gathering. And now you can see I have 39.50 left because I just spent 25 points to gather that bit of uh, herb. <clears throat> so if I run out, I can use those guys. And you can, I think you, uh, you can purchase them as well, but as an elite member, you will get them every day from that daily lead consumable box. So, let's kill some more mobs. I want to show you guys a little bit more gameplay, basic killing, stuff like that. Gutters are really fun to play. Uh, the game does also give you a little bit of assistance, as you see with the little pop over there, it says space bar. Oh, look at that. I leveled up. So I can do Vanguard quests now. Vanguard quests are essentially like little side quests that you can do in addition to your regular quests. It's like a bonus quest. World of Warcraft has that too now. And um, they're sort of given to you automatically whenever you enter an area or kill anything pertaining to the area. And they're completely optional. You don't have to do that. But if you do, they give you a little bit additional extra XP and rewards. <clears throat> so uh, let's see we have to kill four more of these saber tooth dudes let's go ahead and do that I was just like just deciding which one am I going to attack so the game does help you out you can just effectively use the space bar keep hitting space bar the way the game is telling you to and just go to the next ability the next ability the next ability if you're lazy Oh, now see, this is perfect. You see that shiny thing? That is a relic piece. I'm glad one of these dropped so I can tell you a bit more about this. 
When you hit a certain level, relic pieces are going to start dropping to you, and it's going to create what is called an avatar weapon. As you see on the top right there, you now have one of five avatar weapon shards. You're going to get an avatar weapon once you have collected all of the shards. And in this game, the avatar weapon is the strongest weapon that you can have in the game up until you max out. Now, avatar weapons did not originate in this game. You did not start out with them. When the game first was released, you would have to get weapons from questing and from dungeons like any other game. But then eventually they did release the avatar weapon system and they became the most powerful thing in the game. So, you will only use your avatar weapons until you are level 65. If there is a weapon that drops in a dungeon or you get it from a quest, do not utilize those because they will not be better. Avatar weapon is the strongest weapon you can have in this game at any level up until you get to the max level which is 65 at which point you will get a level 65 avatar weapon with which you can start doing the hardcore dungeons and raids in which you can then get a better weapon. But up until level 65, you're going to keep getting newer and newer avatar weapons. I think it's like every 5 to 10 levels or so, you're gonna, the shards are going to start dropping and you're going to collect them all and make the avatar weapon. And that is the weapon you're going to use until your max level. It is 1000% the strongest thing you can use as a weapon until you're maxed out. I promise you this. Just going to get some mail out here. You get random rewards from the system all the time, from leveling up or for doing a quest, whatever, and they'll just they'll mail you crystals. It's actually a good example right now. I can show you what the crystals do. Um, you put crystals onto your gear. Oh, this was a bad spot to stop. Hold on, let me just kill these guys real quick so I can tell you guys more about the crystals. I'm going to stand somewhere safer. Whoops. Go away. I don't want to play with you. Not right now. I mean, I am playing this, this whole point of this game, but <laughs> to play, but that's not what we're doing right now. Okay. <clears throat> oh, cool. Another one. Yay. More relic pieces. That works. Oh my goodness. I only need one more. I'm glad because I'll be able to put one together and then show you guys how that works. But anywho, um, I actually forgot to put crystals in my gear. So crystals, you see the slots? on the, the side of every single piece of gear there you put crystals in those guys and the crystals give you additional statistics well stats additional stats for your gear um initially you can only do it for your chest piece and your weapon but when you're 65 you can do it for your accessories as well and um you there's a lot of different crystals to choose from and you just kind of right click them and they'll pop into the empty place now one thing to remember though is Crystals can easily be damaged unless you use a specific thing that um, protects them. But when you die, it even says in the red right there, may be destroyed upon death. When you die, there's always a chance that the crystal will be destroyed. And you'll have to replace it. We'll have to do that every time you die, essentially. Um, right now, my weapon isn't high enough to use the crystals in my bag. So, but... As you can see, I right-clicked the crystals right there, and they popped into my chest piece. Now, remember, if you change out the gear and it has crystals on it, you have to remove the crystals and then change out the gear. Because if you remove the gear, the crystals will come with it. You saw that there? They were still attached, so you won't be able to just put them on the next item unless you remove them first. So you take them out, then you equip the new piece of gear, and then you re-equip the crystals. Otherwise, you're just going to lose them. And, well, that sucks. All right. So, um, you can see on the bottom I have a Vanguard quest now. It's in green. This is what differentiates the regular quest from the Vanguard quest. It's number two on my map. And um, it'll, you know, again, it's an optional thing. It'll update automatically whenever I'm killing the stuff. But you do get some extra rewards from that. <clears throat> and you can get uh, avatar shards from that as well because that's not inherent to the quest you're doing it's just inherent to the mobs you're killing whether they're a level for you so let's go ahead and uh, what am I supposed to do now I'm supposed to gather sorrow flowers okay um, so when you're gathering something for a quest you do it the exact same way you would gather anything just hit F 
the bright side only is that it doesn't cost you production points. Thank goodness. That would really suck. Hold on, let me just kill this guy. He doesn't want me to take his flower. Come on, buddy. And done. Ooh, sweet! It gave me the rest relic piece. That's perfect. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get this flower for the quest. I'm going to get that last relic piece, and with that, I will be able to show you guys how you can make... Ta-da! See? View equipment pops up underneath 5-5 five five weapon uh, shard collection. I'm going to go somewhere safe again. So monsters aren't attacking me while I'm trying to get a new weapon. So you're going to click on that. <clears throat> and it's going to automatically basically make the weapon for you. And then once you make the weapon, you're going to be able to... As soon as you make the weapon, it will auto-equip it for you. Um, so if you have crystals you want to keep, you may have to de-equip it and then take off the crystals and then re-equip it. But um, it'll also then enchant the weapon for you. There is enchanting in this game, and there's no real point to enchanting gear until you're level 65, but your weapon you should always enchant. In fact, the reason the avatar weapon is as powerful as it is while you're using it is because you enchant it. You have to enchant it, and you have to enchant it to the maximum level you can enchant it. Otherwise, it'll defeat the purpose, and it won't be the most powerful thing you can use, and, well, then what are you doing? Like, why? So, just, just, okay. They changed the enchanting window a little bit. Hold on. Let me try to figure this out. Um, before, they were just, like, auto-equip it, and I'm just, like, a little confused. What's going on? Do I have to just, like, drag it in there? Hold on, sorry, I'm trying to figure this out. They changed the way you enchant in the game, so I'm just trying to figure that out real quick. Just a moment. <clears throat> okay, we hit chant. Uh, I think we need to de-equip it. Uh, let me take it out, and then... There we go. Okay, cool. So as you can see, it shows you the current level and the enchanting level, and you just you need to use feedstock and alcohol as materials to enchant. Those items drop from mobs, and um, you just click Enchant until you get to plus 9, which is the highest level that this item can be enchanted. Most of them can only be enchanted up until plus 9, until very, very high levels, if not max. And initially, the first time you enchant a weapon, you are going to get an achievement for every single level. <laughs> it's a little annoying, but it's okay. I just keep going and going. Okay, and I ran out of materials right before level 9. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> okay, well that's alright. Um, I can just go to the auction house and purchase the materials I need. And... Um, finish enchanting this so I can show you guys. Like I said, um, feedstock and alka has dropped from mobs constantly as you're questing. Everybody, everything drops feedstock and alka has just of higher levels as you go along. But if you're ever in a pinch like this and you need a little bit extra, you can always go to the broker and just buy a little bit. Um, the, your, the brokers are only in cities, however, so you do need to teleport there if you're out in the middle of nowhere like I am now. But that's okay, because I am... Oh, elite! That's right, I'm elite for one day. So I can just teleport. I can use my atlas. So let me go do that real quick. Um... Alright. You guys can see how the, the atlas works. You right click the atlas, you select the place you want to teleport to, and you go. Easy peasy. One minute you're here, and the next minute or you're there. Da da da. You get a loading screen, of course, but that's normal. <clears throat> So I have teleported to the closest available town in this zone. 
Lumber Town. And actually, I can go ahead and show you guys how flying works because you are able to fly here. You can you just hit space bar and hold it to move up, and then you simply use WASD and the mouse in order to move, you know, move in the direction you want to fly in. WASD to actually move on the mouse in order to navigate where you're moving. There's a bar on the bottom, as you can see, so the flighting is limited. You're going out of business. Oh no. <laughs> All right, let's check out. We just need a little bit of feedstock. So get to a broker, F to interact with him, of course. And I mean, trading posts are pretty universal in any game. The only difference is that um, you don't, I mean, the difference between this and WoW, I mean, you do not get the items mailed to you. There is a tab brokered purchases and when you buy something you just go to a different tab in the trade window and get the items you bought or alternatively if you sold something you go to the brokered sales tab in the broker it will not be mailed to you so you brokerage broker purchases and there's the stuff that I bought collect all and it goes into my bag so now that we do have enough materials we can finish enchanting Let's get that baby to plus nine. Okay, just one more. That's all we need to do. And bam. We're plus nine. We are maxed out. Bear in mind that like everything else in this game, there's a failure rate. You can fail to gather something. You can fail to enchant something. You can fail to craft something. There is, And then when you do fail, your materials are still used up and gone. But you have to start again. That's just how Korean MMOs are. Asian MMOs in general. So, now that it's a high enough level, I was able to equip crystals. And there we go. I have my first avatar weapon. It is going to be a lot stronger than the weapon I've been using before. And look at that. I got a free pet. I don't know if... This is definitely a new thing. And I don't know how long this is going on for. But if you um, have a character in Terra that does not belong to a guild you get a self-sufficient uh, achievement which gives you a pet and um, well I'm gonna go ahead and learn the skills so I can see what the pet looks like pets are pretty useful in this game for the most part none of them are just to look cute although this one is but um, a lot of the times the pets in this game will do something, they'll give you more inventory space, they'll automatically gather things for you, it's pretty great. So what is this? Oh, he looks cute, he's a Tuwangi. Tuwangi is a race in the game. Well, he's pretty adorable. I'm definitely going to need to name him something else. What shall I name him? Oh, I have to claim stuff from Alan. By the way, there's a login buff in this game, like there is for a lot of them, so um, just make sure you claim the freebies that you can get every single day. You can get all kinds of fun stuff, like a like a, a an item that you trade for other items, a rubber ducky cap, or, or like, like that's pretty cute, um, a rubber duck footsteps rather, when you walk you make little rubber duckies, you can get a village atlas, those are really useful, so you don't have to buy any. You can get, um, what else? You can get a potion if you're not a lead and you don't get them every day. You just do damage. You can get some buff food, increases your HP and crit factor. There's just all kinds of stuff. Fashion coupons, that's my favorite one. You get a whole 50 of them one of the days. Definitely, if you're playing this game, make sure, if even if you're not playing the day, log in just to claim your reward for the day. Because you can get a lot of really great stuff just for free, just for logging in. There's also, of course, the buff, an actual physical buff your character gets for locking in. If you do log in for consecutive days, you get a movement, speed, and maximum HP, and power buff, which will get higher the more days in a row you are logged in. It is very similar to the kind of effect you get from that um, potion that you use, the Nostrum. But if you're not elite and you don't have access to it, then logging in every day is useful. I'm just going to go ahead and decline this really quick. No interest in uh, joining 
any yields right now. So you can click on the pet and see what he does. This one doesn't do anything special, he just has an emote. But in this little window, you can also change his name. Um, what am I going to change his name to? I have an idea. Peep. Do you know why? Because he looks like a little chicken. A little baby chicken. His name is Peep now. He's pretty cute. It's kind of a bummer that he doesn't do anything, but beggars can't be choosers. I got him for free, so I'm not going to complain. Depending on how much I'm going to play this character, I may later on get her a pet that actually does auto loot. That's like my favorite thing to get are pets that auto loot because looting in this game is a pain. There's no like loot all button or anything like that or area of effect looting that even World of Warcraft has now. They've implemented that a while back. Um, they don't have it in Terra. I don't know if they ever will. It'd be nice if they did, but as of now, they don't. So, um, thanks for tuning in, you guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm definitely going to do some more Terra videos later on where you can see a little bit more of this fantastic game. Um, for now, you can just see this cute little dance. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I know it was mostly babbling and I'm sorry about that. But next time, I promise, it'll be better. You'll see more gameplay. Maybe I'll show you some more mounts, some more pets. A dungeon. We shall see. Doesn't she look cute? <laughs> if you guys could...